Te zic eu. Good afternoon. We'd like to call meeting to order at 6 p.m. I will start with a roll call. Uh, Mr. Carlos Fernandez. Present. I'm here. Rafael Miner. Miner. Present. J.D. Gonzalez. Present. Pierre Mortich. Present. Luis Hinojosa. Present. Juan Pasquel. Present. Arturo Dominguez. Here. Armino Richard. Present. Um, we have Mr. David Pugh, William Young, Puig, pardon, David Puig, William Young, Jean Lindgren, Monica Salinas, Mr. Robert Morris, uh, Jason Hinojosa, and Gerardo Maldonado, not present. Uh, I do. Gonzalo Prida is present. And um, I guess I would like to motion to excuse members that are not present. Second. Second by J.D. Gonzalez. You know what, I kind of think the chair doesn't make a motion, right? Somebody, I'll second. make the motion, somebody makes a second. Second. Motion by J.D. Gonzalez, second by Guillermo Tish. All in favor? Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do we have any, we're going down to number three, any uh, public or citizen comments uh, filed online or here, no, nobody present? Okay, we'll go into the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on November 17. Uh, everybody received a copy of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Arturo Dominguez and second by J.P. Gonzalez. <coughs> Not in favor of our meetings, Aye. of our minutes? Aye. All approved. Items for this, we're well, going to item for discussion. Um, I need to entertain a motion <coughs> for to table the item number one, presentation by Clean Air Radio Coalition. They cannot uh, attend this meeting, so we need a, a motion to table motion the item. Motion taken. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm doing what you're doing. Who put the motion? I'm sorry. JD? Yeah. And oh, you put the motion? Yeah. Guillermo Tish, motion. We need a second. Second. Okay. Table for table for our next meeting. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, discussion with possible action to nominate and elect a chairman for the Port Country <coughs> Advisory Committee and any other matters necessary to. Uh, Ms. Yvonne, do you have a nom uh, Nominees. Yes. Uh, good evening, committee members. Yvette Limon, Bridge Director as the committee liaison. Um, I received uh, a nomination of, of yourself, Mr. Chairman, of Milo Richard. Do you accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Okay. Committee members, are there any other nominations for chairman for this committee? No other nominations? No. Then, committee so, members, can you so entertain? We need a, a motion to uh, motion we need a motion to, to vote. Uh, we have a quorum, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. As chairman of the committee. Yes, you have quorum. We need five. We yeah. need five. Five. Here. <coughs> so we need a motion for somebody. You know what? Before, yeah, I'd like to make a motion, but also, is there a name for vice chair as well or no? Um, that would, I guess that would come. That would come at the next meeting. The next meeting? No, we voted right now, right? Uh, We're going to vote for the yeah. chair, but then is there going to be chair. we need to make a vote, uh, nomination for vice, vice chair as well, right? Vice, no, you're right. Yeah, we because as you're moving chair. up from vice chair to the yeah. chair, yeah. so is there is there any is there any names mentioned down there for vice chair as well or no? Not on the agenda. Well, you know what? Can I make a motion here? I think I make a verbal motion, right? I'd like to motion not to go to Oh, we need to finish our first motion. What? I'm sorry. We need to get. And then how do how do we add the motion to the <coughs> item to the vice chair? So it's coming well, it, out. it'll it'll come in as any other matter to matters incident there too. So okay. entertain a motion for motion the for chair the chair to be chairman. So my wait, hold oh, on. When I sent the agenda item, item it said for both nomination uh, nomination and to vote for chair and vice chair. That's what. Sure. Well, it, 
I, I think you. I don't know. I saw it as, as chair, but um, because I, I didn't know who was going to be. You couldn't. Chairman, you couldn't but, send I mean, it for vice chair because I. Right. Because I, he I, was the vice chairman. The position wasn't said, available. I, I couldn't put there for vice chairman because I would, in essence, say he would be selected oh. as chairman. <coughs> but now it is available. Pero, what about if we table it for our next meeting and vote for it? Then it will be the same. For the vice chairman. But we, can't, but we need to vote for one so I can get out of. That's right. I need to get out of vice chair. <laughs> so I need to vote for me. You need to vote me in so I can. Right. Can, Let's get rid of the first one and then we'll move <laughs> yes. forward. Because it's automatic. No, it's 21. Yeah. It's only one candidate. It's automatic. Um, well, we'll still entertain a, a vote or a motion to accept the oh, he nomination. Made, made the motion. Jamie Gonzalez is getting a motion. We need a second. Second. Second, Reverend Mayer, Linda, and then uh, all in favor? Ah, all right, okay, all in favor. So, so Mr. Emilio Richer will be the chairman for the Port of Entry Advisory Committee. For the next year. And for this Yes, for this term. year. For this <coughs> year. And then, so now there's a vice chairman then position the, open. Yes. Yes. So we can entertain that item for discussion at our next committee meeting. Okay, it has to be at our next committee meeting then? If that's how you want it, unless you want to use kind of... Some of the w people that are not here, maybe they want to... Yeah. You have a motion to, to request a nomination, nomination. For, for vice chair. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can we, or, or can we nominate now or is it... You can nominate now if you entertain that motion and we won't take action on it until the next meeting. Oh, okay. So it has to be the next meeting. So, okay. So, I'll, I'll make a motion to select and, and vote for a, a vice chair. Whatever you all want to decide. That's up Second. To you. Sure. Okay. Vote. All in favor? Right. Yes. I mean, if they're not here, so they're not here. So. So you, you, your motion is to, to, to select take one and, today. And, and, and vote on it. Yeah, I mean, if, okay. Then if, if that's what they want. Those are the wishes them, of the yeah, yes, we can. Now okay. we have a quorum, so uh, yeah. we, yes, that's that's the point. Right? So yeah. Okay. So now we need a motion to nominate. We need to nominate. To receive nominations. To receive for nominations vice for the vice chair. Uh, I guess, Arthur, I guess Arthur, somebody. Uh, I want to you want make a motion and put Arthur Dominguez as vice chairman. Okay. Any second? Any second. Any discussion? Go and vote. Okay. Any okay. other no any vote? nominations? Any other nominations? Anybody else? Uh -huh. Any discussion or any other nomination? Right there, no. So, no discussion, no other nominations, so we can vote. So, I need everybody to vote. All in favor? In favor, approved. Okay. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Favor. All in favor? No, no, okay. okay, this is first day. I know. But you can vote for the other one. You guys wanted to vote for vice chair before you open up the position. So, going on to point number three update on extending World Trade Bridge 24 hours per day, Monday through Saturday. And any, any other materials? If, uh, Ms. Yvette i like to note that this is actually should be update on the, on study for extending. It shouldn't be extending because we're going to do a study. That's why I think Gene made the change on that, not the request. So. Um, good evening, committee members. Yvette Limon, Bridge Director as the liaison for the Port of Entry Advisory Committee. Um, as discussed in the previous meeting, um, we discussed the study, but before getting to the study, they advised me to get together with the four main agencies, which is CBP, uh, Mexican Customs, SAT, Fideicomiso, and of course myself representing the city of Laredo for their thoughts as to the possibility of opening World Trade Bridge 24 hours. Uh, to get their input before we move on to getting studies done. So um, I did meet with them and um, they all indicated that at, at this point in time, they're not in agreement in extending 
the operations at World Trade 24 hours because they feel that we still haven't maximized the use of the 16, hour, 16 hours in the day at World Trade. Um, there's security concerns um, on the Mexican side as far as Assad. There are security concerns with bringing, creating another shift and having the employees come in from their homes at that hour to, to work. Um, security concerns, um, there is employee um, shortages, they're short on personnel, uh, the drivers are regulated, so extending more hours, they'll need more operators. Um, they also um, express the need to kind of work with the entire logistics chain because it's, they indicated it's not just about us extending the hours. The entire logistic chain needs to change their way of doing business to accommodate the use of the 24 hours. So um, that was kind of their, their feedback as to this idea. Um, to give you all information as to what we currently do, um, these past three weekends, we had a customer that, that needed extraordinary hours. So they put in the request through CBP, through SOT. They approved it. They communicated it to us, to the city, to Fideicomiso. We were all on the same conversation through an email requesting extended hours. So. Um, we all extended hours, two additional hours. Uh, one weekend, it was Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, the other weekend was Saturday and Sunday, and then this past weekend, just Saturday. So we already work with the industry to accommodate special crossings. Um, so we will continue uh, working this process as with any customer that would need extraordinary hours as we've done in the past, we'll continue to do. And when I guess we see that the need is there to begin contracting or working on studies, then we'll, um, I guess, go, go that route. A quick question on, the, on that procedure. Uh, can you elaborate just a little bit on how that procedure works? How far in advance do, does a customer need to ask for apply for extended hours and how, what is the charge? I think what, what they normally do is they request it through CBP and SAT. Uh, us, the city of Laredo, we, we don't get involved at the beginning. Oh, okay. If CBP says yes and SAT says yes, since they are the ones that check the cargo and, and take care of the cargo, then they notify Fideicomiso and we agree, we, we open. Um, as far as, um, I can't speak for the other agencies, but as far as the city of Laredo, we've done this before to other customers and we've, we've, we haven't charged them any overtime. We understand the need. We wanna remain competitive. Uh, they're not asking for, they ask for two extended hours. So it's automated on our end. We keep one collector, one supervisor, we make sure that the customer has enough money in the ABI account so we don't have to keep a cashier so that they can deposit right before. They have their account ready and we stay open and they process. This past Saturday, 60, how many 60 trucks? 60 to 70 trucks passed on uh, Saturday between 4 and 6 p.m. Yeah. And all of them were for that customer? For that customer. Oh, okay, so he had 40 loads right. across. Right, oh, okay, okay, right. Okay. And just for clarity, I think you have to go to SAT first before you go to CBP. It, okay, I, I don't exactly yeah, so know yeah. kind of who, but yeah, yes, so. they communicate through SAT and CBP, and if they agree, then they let us know. Okay, we allowed extraordinary hours from these many hours from this time to this time on whatever day, and, and we're there. Ten second thing, uh, for exclusive, it's exclusivity for that particular client. Nobody else can cross. It's just them, right? Nobody else can cross. Else. Just that. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Just for clarity. Yes, yes. I mean, no one has at this point attempted to get to World Trade. And I mean, we don't check because we have, our collectors have no authority to check who's crossing. 
so they would know that only that company should cross. I didn't hear from But Mexico you don't announce Sats. it that, oh, this Saturday oh, no, no, we're no. going to be open two no, more hours. No, yeah. no. We communicate amongst ourselves, and that customer knows that we extended the hours from, from closing at 4 to 6 p.m. for them to accommodate their, their crossings. So we didn't have issues from SAT saying, hey, we had a, a truck that shouldn't have crossed. So. Thank you, Chairman. May we recognize? Yes. On, on, on the communication with the big four, did you talk to all four of them? Yes. Yes. I had a meeting at World Trade in our conference room. And we had Mr. Raul Trapp from Fideicomiso, Albert Flores Javi Vasquez from CBP, and we had two gentlemen representing a, a colonel uh, uh, from SAT at World Trade. And the last question was Colombia in the conversation. I didn't discuss anything with Colombia. Colombia, we haven't maximized use at World Trade with a higher volume of trucks. Colombia has more capacity. I didn't contact um, the administrador or the people at, on, at Colombia. I wanted to focus on World Trade first, but should a directive be to, to do Colombia, but we have more capacity at Colombia. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's, if, it, if it's not feasible for them to <coughs> extend the hours of World Trade, I don't know thank how you. the Colombia folks will well, feel. Well, the original request was World Trade Bridge 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So, oh, but in the, in the I, conversation I know you was... Did, you did also, mention... I was not in the... Uh, so Vice Chairman Dominguez, you did mention to also possibly explore Colombia, but I focused on World Trade. Um, but again, the insecurity is... Is a big factor. The Mexican More side, they're going to bring that up. So, so if Laredo is, has a problem with insecurity with Colombia, it's even worse. worse. <laughs> it's even worse. So I, I, I think, I think we, we should look forward to having a 24 hour bridge, regardless at one where. Point. I mean, just yeah. having one. I mean, all the northern border is open 24 hours. You know, just to add to that, if I can, I, I would rather. Put it back on the on the trade stakeholder. They don't want to request in 24 hours. I said, so I, I request a commitment. Fill these hours, and then after that, we'll move forward. Because before we move forward, you have to comply with this to help us out, and we'll help you out. Right. Just so. I mean, the good thing is there's a law now that the city can pay for overtime, and maybe that should be the route to to get extended hours. If if one of our customers requests an overtime for a period of time. But they would have to pay the city in order to pay for that well, over time. I guess I mean, at, at that point, the city can evaluate, and if it's to remain competitive, if absolutely. it's the, if a decision is made not to charge overtime to continue with trade and not impede, then what, whatever the just because we can't pay for overtime, <laughs> but through the city, maybe we could work something out. I mean, then again, it's up to customs if. If they don't want to spend their money on overtime, that's up to them. But that For this particular case, they all agreed to extend their hours to accommodate. Oh, so, and we have had, it's not, it's not often, but it does come from time to time where the request comes in. Yeah, the amount of trucks is a factor. Okay. Yeah. Well, so probably, probably this has to do because it's um, outbound uh, traffic, not inbound. They could be inbound, then they have to put the people mm -hmm. on, on, on CBP. And the only thing is that they just leave the lanes open, and then SAT has the work, but not here. Yeah. No, it Probably was, that, that's the that, that's the difference. It was for inbound. They they came in, and then we processed the empty trucks going back into Mexico. So, so it was the two, both. two way. Both. Yes. Yes. So the numbers you gave us both. To, I mean, inclusive of the See, both sides. The numbers or? I gave you were were the last were the last crossings we had this past Saturday, but we had more or less the same volume of traffic. So 50 trucks, trucks came or more outbound came in, and then 50 inbound? And then inbound? went back into Mexico, yes. Okay. Because okay. If, if we don't cooperate, then the drivers can come in, but then they won't have a ah, means to get back into Mexico. Oh, the the yes. truck, okay, okay, yes. okay. Yeah, not the trailer, the truck had to go it back. It came in and then the empty ah, went back. So you let empties go through World Trade? You let empties go through World Trade Bridge so they passed or Outbound. It was like, so, so, it so, yeah, so, we sent it, it came in, and then empty, empty yeah, empty, empty back, yeah. Return. Okay, well, that's good, that's good, good that we could accommodate, you know, the users in that way.
and it, it we don't say only for a certain industry if anybody this has I've been with the bridge for 20 years and this has been as, as needed if Pat and CBP agree they let us know and and we're there thank you Ms. Neal. Uh, on item number four we're going to item number four update on the insufficient funds fee for commercial vehicles and any other materials incident there too Again, Yvette Limon, Bridge Director, Committee Liaison. Um, as an update to this, uh, I spoke to the interim city manager, Mr. Keith Tillman, regarding this, this topic and, and my concern as to why I brought this before the committee. And, and he agreed. Um, I did tell him it's going to impede and impedes on traffic right now and, and holds trade, but more so it'll affect the fast lanes once they're completed because that's the area where they u turn out so he he was in agreement and um we do have an item coming before council on tuesday nice. and uh, i'll read it all right i mean it, it's technical but it's amending section one of ordinance 2017-0-110 of the city of laredo and authorizing to implement an insufficient fund fee of $25 plus a $4.75 per axle toll fee for southbound commercial vehicles that arrive at the toll booth with insufficient funds in their ABI system account. So that's how it's going to be presented to council. Um, well, what's the total going to be? The total? Uh, $25 plus the per axle fee. So if it's a two axle, it will be the $25 plus a $9.50. It's the $25 plus the per axle fee that their, their, their toll would have been if they would have had funds. Oh, okay. Got it? $25 plus the per axle fee. Yeah, but you're still going to return. You're not going to let it's, it through. They're still going to go back. Go back, but so the $25 plus, plus the, per the axle fee that would cost them to go in. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Limon. And uh, do we need to be present, any of us in the committee, to be present on that meeting? Because I don't want to be out, out of time, but it's only it's, it's not. Oh, I mentioned here that it was discussed okay. here at the committee and unanimously agreed to charge a fine. A recommendation. Fee, yeah. A fee, and this was the city manager's recommendation. Whenever you, you know what, the, <laughs> whenever you need support, just let them know. And You're welcome to be here at the meeting. For You're always welcome. You yeah, are... Sure. I'll be out of town that day. That's what I was you asking. You are representing the Port of Entry Advisory Committee, so you don't need an invitation. You're always welcome to be at any of the city council meetings. And yes, if it requires any support or additional clarification from any of the council members, you're here um, okay. firsthand to kind of express your your opinion. And so we can always okay. write a write in. Yeah. Right. I would probably write in. I'll write. We're not here. Like, you can do that too. Send, send, send your comments and, and regarding out. item Just once you sure. see the agenda item, whatever your comments, and they can kind of read them into the meeting okay. as well. I have one one, one thing to comment. Uh, it would be better if if you put the fee and the axle per the the per axle fee the per axle fee, but let them cross. Don't bring them back because if you bring them back, it, it will slow down the traffic, and we won't. Uh, do anything uh, no. th that should be a point for discussion and, and see if, if there's, there's a fee and no returning uh, that would expedite the whole uh, process much 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 better it was discussed with mr. Selman but um, he understood the fact that this has happened with our overweight penalty fee he charged our account we let him go through and then they abandon the account. They don't cover the negative. They abandon it. And for whatever reason, they come and they reopen it under somebody, some other name. And we send letters and try to collect, and we, we don't collect. So okay. for that and reason, we don't allow them to go and leave it negative because they can possibly abandon the account. Hopefully we can measure from the, after that takes place, we'll measure for the all in three months and see what's it's going down. No, no, no. Yeah. We're going to track it. That, that's the intent, right, that they discussion. manage their ABI account better to, I mean, the intent is not a revenue generator. It's just a deterrent so that they can manage their account better 
and and avoid having no funds. At the end of the day, I think we're hitting it right in the profit. The twenty five dollars is probably the profit that a truck has crossing. You know, it's a little thing you have. But no, but it's un it's un castigo importante que nos va a hacer que hagan. Especially the the one time. I don't think we'll get rid of the one timers, but we'll get rid of the ten timers and the eights and the fives and the sixes. Yo creo que es una buena medida para empezar y ver el efecto. Creo que sí lo va a mejorar mucho. Okay. Hopefully. Um, so I have a question. Yes. How come the city can charge the credit card again? Why do we have to keep on watching ourselves? How much balance do we have? And right. We, we do have a part of the toll collection system, part of the ABI account. We have a program called automatic replenishment. Okay. Any account holder can tell us charge this credit card this amount of money when my balance goes below this amount of money. Okay. We already have that program. They have that, that availability to do that. Some do participate in that program, others don't. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Well, any other discussion? Yeah, then I think that they can make um, that everybody needs a, a, a backup credit card on their account. Yeah, well, so we, we discussed that already. Yeah. And, uh, Council Legal I think the uh, legal department said, and they didn't want to proceed for that for that reason. Okay. But that would that would definitely be the next step. That was our first we'll choice. That would we'll have been the first. We'll choice. continue yeah. to promote yeah. the auto replenishment so right. that it, it does it automatically. You don't have to worry. The system will automatically charge your account, however much you indicate, and at whatever once your minimum balance goes below, let's say twenty five dollars, charge my credit card a hundred dollars. The system automatically does. Right. You know what, Yvonne? Probably the people who have the credit card on file and they go beyond that balance, you can charge them automatically and let them cross. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are charged automatically. No, no, probably they, they don't have the automatic payment, but probably they have a credit card on file. So we, you just charge it and let them go. They will, you, you will have a credit card to we, charge we it. We cannot charge them without their authorization. Let's change they the have to authorize. And if, if, if you change, doesn't everybody that has a credit card is authorizing for the replenishment automatically? Yes, yes right. Yes. So that's, so that's one of those if you're problems. not part of the auto replenish, you, we don't have a credit card yeah. on file. If you're not part of the program, you, the, the, you don't have a credit card on file. Everybody that has a credit card on file has a replenishment automatically. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not exactly. No, you can have. No, no, you can have the credit card for no automatic payment. No. No. If you switch for it, then no, no, not automatic payment. Everybody has a credit card is because they have the auto replenishment. Right. If you're not in the auto replenishment, you don't need a credit card on file. No, 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 you can't. Okay, well, there's, in order there's for a two a different, okay, okay. If, yeah. if it allows you to put a credit card on file, we cannot charge it unless you authorize it through the auto replenishment to tell the system how much to charge and at what point. We can't just the city say, ah, they have a credit card? Charge it. Cobra el mil dollar. Okay, no. So then let's, let's, let's change the contract. So let's get this rolling. Yeah. And then we'll see. And I'm guessing when it starts hitting their pockets, like I said, we'll probably not get the one one timers, but the eight and the tens and the ones that do it constantly. We'll probably start wanting to get uh, with the city. How can I avoid this? And one of the things is to promote the auto replenishment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the problem is not with the ones that have a credit card, but with the ones that do not. Correct. I mean, the one thing we could do is as an advisory board just make a recommendation and see whether the city the council approves it or not. So it's just a recommendation that we're doing. Okay. So we're, so we're gonna that. present this to council on, on Tuesday. We'll, and like I said, we'll keep monitoring it and, and then we'll monitor coming up with new ideas yeah. on how the trend keeps going and see right. in the next three months after this. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Um let's go into section number six, other business. Anything anybody have anything on it? Yeah, business? you know, I like to I've I've uh, been on other committees and I know that um, whenever there's an outgoing chair or so forth, there's always been a city uh, recognition. Is there going to be something? Can we offer that if we're going out? Or is that how's going on with that? Because I know that they were elected chair. You know, they at least they get some kind of recognition from the city as they're going out and taking consideration the new the new board. Right, right. I'll I'll mention it to to city management and see. I'm if not talking about big balloons. I'm just right, right, right. There, yeah. See letter. if yeah, yeah. Letter. There letter. is time to. Uh, thank you, put it in for this meeting. If thank not, we'll put it in yes. for for the next one. 
city council must be aware. Yes, sir. And I'll, I, I, I'd like to, to share information. Mr. <laughs> Joe Gonzalez will be our next NCBFA National Custom Broker Association president. Ooh. That's on the local level, that's on the national level, so at the national congrats. Level. Congrats, Nick. Congratulations. Congratulations. <clears throat> um, so any, any other discussion on other business? Nope. Don Carlos? Yo recuerdo haber visto un punto, no fue en este grupo de correos, de formar una comisión para revisar los avances de, de los módulos del Laredo, del puente de tres. Yes, I, I, I sent that agenda item, and it's not here. Sí, y yo creo que pudiéramos extenderlo no solamente a la ampliación que se está haciendo con los cuatro módulos, sino también revisar cuál es el estatus. Se oye que hay dos caminos que van a conectar las minas con el 35. Y definitivamente su gente, eh, yo en lo personal creo que es mayor el problema afuera del puente que adentro del puente. Y creo que esas dos vialidades ayudarían mucho para desahogar y, y pues tener un tener el espacio, el, el, la, la capacidad del, del puente para varios años más. Se pudiera formar alguna comisión para tener más información al respecto. Um, Mr. Chairman, I did receive your um, that discussion point. Yes. I shared it with uh, the interim city manager, Mr. Selman, and he said, he said, uh, let me take care of this. So um, I didn't receive authorization to put it on this meeting's agenda, but they are looking into who will be part of um, the, not necessarily a work group meeting, but whenever there are stakeholder meetings on the project or whenever there are meetings on the project, then um, we'll make note. Uh, keep in mind that that if the meeting is not a like a public meeting that there's no agenda and we don't post, we can't have a quorum because you are a committee. So um, he's he was going to look into all of that. Maybe not a, a formal another committee exactly, but a subcommittee where it involves a private sector with a yeah. contractor and the designer mm -hmm. and form something just to get informed, and it doesn't have to be like a monthly meeting, probably every three or four months just to see how they have done it, get some opinion here and there, when everything starts going. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably take, uh, I would like to you know, participate with you, probably I'll, I'll get in touch with you, okay. and we'll set a meeting with uh, Mr. Selman and kind of express a little bit right idea of what could be done for that. We don't want another formal committee that's just gonna be for doing that, but just uh, like a, a city committee like this is. It would be you know, this is, this is, we were gonna, recommend the council to create one, to create a follow-up uh, expansion and all of that with, with World Trade Bridge. It's a, a, work a work group committee to, to look into it, to, to make it work, to make it faster or whatever. Well, it, it's, words, al it's already just, being worked on. I no, left you an update. I didn't bring it here. It's I left you been. an update on your stations of mm -hmm. where we're at. <coughs> so it is being worked on. They are continuing to work on the application for the presidential permit for the expansion. So I left you an update oh, this is also on for the both. projects. I thought this was only for the fast lane. It's for so us both. So it's both, okay. Yeah, so we're at least the we're fast, getting- The whim and the expansion. So, so we're getting a little uh, into- on, But once we good. get yeah. to Thank you. more involvement as to the, the final oh, design and everything, then okay. definitely we okay. will keep you in mind. You know, just, uh, just additional information request to I hear a lot of public information going out on the four or five bridge and so forth, but I don't, I know that they have, to, uh, there's a process and it sounds like the permit's already been requested. Can we get more information on the status of where, where they're going with the four or five? Because there's still, I know you have both sides working, you have opposition and you have people in favor for, and just uh, my, as an advisory committee, we'd like to see where we're going to, where the advancement of the, the improvement of the Port of Laredo, you know, but at the same time, see what the status is, if we have a permit, if we have a request for permit, or if they're, just, if they're doing a study first, or what the process is to see where we're going with. Okay, um, I, I will make Mr. Selman know of your request. Um, at this time, I've not can in I, any I, knowledge <laughs> of what's going on. I haven't been in any meetings regarding the 
four it's or five bridge. media. I hear the mayor always saying, but, hey, uh, and you like to hear permit. You know, I thought there's a process behind that. So, you know, just to give the actual status on that. Yeah. Should I know of something? I will definitely share it with you. I'd like to make another request. Can we ask uh, Mr. Valdez, Office Secretary, to do a Texas Open Meetings Act presentation so that we all can get informed on that? Check with Mr. Valdez. I don't know if when you all were nominated, if you had to follow or do a training. No? no. Okay, no. I'll, I'll get with Mr. Valdez so that we'll if there's something that, that you all can kind of do. And can't do. <laughs> on your own and, and something virtual or a presentation or something, but I'll, I'll get with Mr. Valdez so that we can get you all the, the Texas Open Meetings Act training. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to uh, item number seven, uh, schedule next meeting date. Uh, so we put the date for March 4, which is March 16th, which is the week of spring break. Spring break. Yeah, so I guess we're all parents here that um, we could do March 20, 23rd, 23rd, which is also Wednesday. That works. That works. March 23rd, yeah. March 23rd. March 23rd. Okay, there's any more discussion or not? Uh, motion, motion, to for, uh, motion for an act to adjourn. Motion, sorry, for motion. a motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. By motion by second. Arturo, second by JD Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. 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 At 639 p.m.